In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. Jesus, Mary, St. Joseph, and St. Teresa, pray for us. So one more thing about my dream. Remember how the dream of the bear, which I think symbolizes communism in the church and in the world, and how the prayers, I felt the Holy Rosary especially, and all the prayers together, the sacraments, and just everything we can do to prep our actions, like Valentina Sidney Sears said, doing good works for people, whatever you can do with your hands, like St. Paul says, whatever you can do with your hands, you know, working quietly at home, and rejoicing always and praising the Lord, spreading the faith to non-believers, uh, bearing insults patiently, all these things. Uh, what, is it, what does it say? Um, uh, consoling the doubtful in spiritual remember our spiritual works of mercy are very very important even more important than our corporal works of mercy in many ways all those are those are also very important because remember this this earth is only temporary and we're kind of here for suffering just like the cross anyway besides the bear i just remember this i saw this beautiful in my dream this beautiful bluebird and i love the bluebird you know, my family could, will be able to tell you my family origin that as a girl, I loved the Bluebird, and I and I was in this little organization called the Bluebirds. I think it was like, oh, I, I can't I can't remember the name of these things. They're kind of silly, but I had this little Bluebird pin. I remember I liked Bluebirds, but there's tons of Bluebirds in North Idaho. And I was kind of reminded. I get excited when I see flocks of Bluebirds. I haven't I've seen some Bluebirds from time to time around here, but in the hills, I think they're a little more prominent. I don't know for sure, but uh, they're, they're kind of small. But in my dream, I saw this big fat one, and it was kind of like this big puffy, puffy uh, breast, like it was pregnant, like with the eggs inside. It was so beautiful. I was so happy. But I think it's a sign of spring coming and also of the new life and the new era of peace we're going to enter into if we just would only stay faithful to our Lord and grip onto your rosary for dear life, you know. It's our anchor. It's our joy. It's our consolation. Whenever you're confused or suffering, pick up the rosary and start praying. And Our Lady will cover you with her mantle, literally and figuratively. Like I said, I have my Our Lady Guadalupe uh, next to the window. And when I, when I um, you know, tie the curtains, I can put her over me. And she, her mantle is literally over me. And it's a blessed mantle. It's so consoling. But even, you know, spiritually, keep this... Padre Pio calls it the weapon. As long, remember Moses, when he was, you know, defeating this one army, as long as he held his rod up on the mountain, his army, the Israelites, were winning the battle. But when he got tired and he put his rod down, the other side started to win. So his brother Aaron and the other, the other prophet or helper had to hold up his arms so he could win the race. And I feel that too. We have to hold up the rosary. As long as we have the rosary and hold it up, then we can win the race. I remember when I was in the, this horrible divorce court situation, my Lord actually said, Anna, put the rosary down. Because I was holding the rosary, and what he wanted to do was bad, and so he didn't want to see the truth in his face. And silly me, I just did whatever he said because I just wasn't, I didn't know and I wasn't just, I didn't know what to do. But I, believe me, it was being held in my hands. But I should have just said, you know, no, go away, you know, this is my defense. This is my armor, so I do it now. This is it. Victory, hooray. And, uh, you know, as long as I hold up this, this rosary asher, we cannot admit, def we will never admit defeat, and we will always be protected, you and I, together, because mother and child is what the Lord loves and wants together forever, right? Just like the Blessed Mother and the, and the Son. So like I said, after you run as fast as you can to St. Michael's World Apostolate, and you join them as fast as you can. Don't look back, and don't even bother to stop by and tell me hello on your way. It says that in scripture. Do not salute anyone on your way. When you're doing the will of God, you go. And you go straight there. That's your mother's. Um, that's my firm res resolve for you. To go there and do what my, Mr. Michael Mangan tells you to do. Whether it's become a priest. Whatever he wants, tells you to do. 
the St. Veronica the Cross because he's got that special ordination on him of St. Michael. And uh, Bill Dykes, you know, is in heaven with the breastplate. And he will guide you too. So you do what, exactly what they tell you to do. And don't look back and praise the Lord. Uh, uh, the Lorena prayers, I, I, you know, I took some of her most recent prayers. I think there was nine of them. And I, I put them into one PDF file. And I will put that link down below for you to print out and have those in hand. I have them in a red little binder. So have those on hand because you'll need those for the warning. I was reading the John Leary prophecies and they state that you know, this, this solar eclipse with the, all the planets in alignment is from God. And it's a sign. It's actually in the, in the John Leary prophecies. Our Lord says it, you do, he does says in scripture to look in the sky for signs. And our Lord verified that this is one of the signs. Now, will the warning come around the time of this sign? That I don't know. But it's a sign to, you know, pay attention, watch, you know. Like, gird your loins and be ready. Be ready because you never know the day or the hour. And that's true for any of us at any time. You know, we never know that our God, as one priest told me, when I was in Olympia, you know, God has the power to stop your heart. He has the power to take your life uh, at any time, really. I mean, your life is, <laughs> you know, is being hung by a string over the, the Lord's will. As long as, you know, he can take any of us at any time. And I think we get kind of proud and we get complacent and we get, it's basically pride and we just don't, you know, we don't consider that our life at the very hour could be ending so that's why we've got to always be prepared no matter what the signs are extra bonus or grace i think to, to know that we need to keep ready but the sign is also always in the sky the two great signs the sun and the moon always in the sky the sunrise and sunset you know these are also signs the eucharist every day being held up as the last supper is a, is a sign every day these feast days are signs the 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 saints are a sign of witness we have many miracles and signs and it's growing every day the communion of the saints is growing every day these are wonderful signs and graces to us every day to keep watching be prepared so there's no excuse for our complacency there's no excuse for us to get lazy on our faith now's the time to run like i said if you're a woman you run to that convent. Um, I can't tell you this enough. They need vocations. We need vocations desperately. And, you know, the Lord is the one who can fill us completely. He made us. He's our spouse. He's our spouse forever and ever. He's the one that gives us the kingdom. And I highly recommend, if you're a lady, to consider very seriously the convent. And if you're a young man, even if you shall be in college, you know, or in high school or middle school, you know, to seriously consider the priesthood is in desperate need. I was reading this prophecy of, uh, I think it's from a Brazilian seer, and he was saying that it's going to be so bad, the lack of priests and clergy. It's going to be that the churches will be empty. And we need those vocations, and we need them. Uh, we need to discern, but it revolves. It involves sacrifice, absolutely. And I think the worldliness of this world is pulling people out of their decision making to to do the 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 priestly life because of the the sacrifice it involves and should involve. And then you get, um, you know, sometimes the seminaries, you know, they don't often do their, their, their true jobs and they don't promote sacrifice enough. You know, a lot of them are, are literally part, drunken party rooms. And this is sick. So I think part of Bishop Strickland's mission is to clean up the seminaries and to create an order of men that are truly, truly devoted, fasting, prayer, and alms, just like the three kings, you know. So I consider you meditating on the three kings gifts and their star every day the star is the holy ghost in the eucharist you know it comes to our chest the star of bethlehem it's a healing ointment and balm it's a beautiful thing just the rays of it is the peace of the holy ghost coming into hearts 
<laughs> and uh, I consider forming that group the spouse of the holy spouse of the three wise men uh, because it's there it's just such a wonderful devotion but anyway let's have a wonderful holy saturday may god bless you please feel free to print out these lorena prayers i'll put the link below they come from mary refuge of souls.com may god bless you in the name of the father and the son and the holy ghost amen <laughs>